morning. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming this morning. And, and you, know, you know why I'm here is because of this right here. 50,000. That's how many people die every year in automobile accidents in the United States. Now, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to play with numbers, and I've used this number and over and over again because it really hasn't changed. In my, in my career as a state policeman, that number was down as low as 34,000 and up as high as 62,000. But 50,000, every one of you in this room has been in a big football stadium or baseball stadium around this country. And, and you've sat there and you've looked at the crowd in that stadium. That's how many 50,000 people is. Will you do me a favor? If this program has any effect on you at all today, the next time you're in one of those stadiums, when, when there's nothing else happening out on the field, start right here alongside of you and look at some faces and some characters that you see here. Carry it out there in the left field while there's just little people jumping up and down out there in the center field where it looks like a moving anthill, you, just color, you can't separate faces. Don't forget to look in the second deck, carry it all the way around here alongside of you and, and look at some faces again and then realize that that many people are going to die every year in an automobile accident in the United States. Honest to God, it's mind-boggling. You, you, you just, you, you know, you read in the paper about two people, about three people in, in, in an accident, and then you hear about another one a couple of weeks later or a couple of days later, and you don't think much about it. But 50,000 people, that's a tremendous amount of people, and you know somebody right here in this area where you live got up this morning, got dressed, brushed their teeth, combed their hair, they went out, then they got in their car, they went to work, to church, to play, wherever they were going to go. And before the night's over with people, they're going to be a traffic fatality. They're going to have had one of these. Is it you, people? You, you got up this morning and, and, and came here. Now, you got to drive back home? You know another little thing about this number? You remember Vietnam? A terrible part of our of our life in Vietnam in in the 14 years we were in Vietnam we killed 64,000 Americans 64,000 just a little bit more than that in 14 years everybody was upset that we're killing our young men in Vietnam over 14 years 64,000 do you know people in that same 14 years we killed in the United States on our highways three quarters of a million people. Three quarters of a million. Now think about that. And, and how many of you took your driver's license out of your pocket and went down and marched on your secretary of state and said, I don't like this. I, I don't want him to die. I, I, I don't want to drive anymore. No, but we accept it. We accept three quarters of a million. That's an enormous amount of people. And you know, you know why we have so many people in this country, why we have so many of them, we get a hard time getting them into their seatbelts. They, they don't want to wear their seatbelts because it, th this can't never happen to me. It's always going to happen to somebody over on the next street or in the next mile or the next county. It's never going to happen to me. And, 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 and it, it does. Those, those, those people just don't believe that, that it can happen to them. You know, my, my wife and I was out in... Las Vegas here uh, two or three years ago, and, and we were with some friends. And this, this one friend said, hey, Jack, I got a buddy of mine coming in. He's flying his own airplane in here. He's rich. And he's going to rent a car so we, can, so we can run around out here in Las Vegas. So sure enough, that night, up he came with a big Chevrolet station wagon. And you might know my wife and I ran out, jumped in the car, and, and we got in the back seat. We put on the seat belts. They were dirty. We had to dig them out of the crack of the seat. And we put them on. And we started down the road. And my buddy introduced me to this guy over his shoulder. I shook hands with him. And, and uh, I, I noticed his shoulder harness was hanging here. And I said, hey, you haven't got your, you haven't got your seat belt on. And, and Cliff grabbed me. He says, hey, Jack, leave him alone. He's all right. He's a, he's a good driver. He used to be a race car driver. You don't have to worry about him. And we're only going to be right here on the strip. So, you know, I, I didn't say anything more to him about that. And the next day, we were in the Stardust out there. If you know that place, that great big sign out in front, 
when we were all coming out there, he and I happened to come out ahead of everybody else, and we were standing there underneath that sign talking and waiting for him. And I, and I said to him, I said, hey, I understand you used to be a race car driver. And he said, yeah, I did. And he said, that's how I made my money. I said, well, hey, if, if, if you were a race car driver, how come you don't wear your seat belts? You know what he said? You know what that man said? He said, oh, hell, Jack, I'm going to live to be 100 years old. Oh, hell, Jack, I'm going to live to be 100 years old. Three months after that man made that statement, he and his wife were, were, were traveling, and she was driving, and they had a head-on collision, just left front corner to left front corner, minor, if you want to call a head-on collision minor. But in that collision, he bounced forward and got his head up here along the header of the, da of the windshield like this and shattered his neck. He's in one of these. Oh, hell, Jack, I'm going to live to be 100 years old. Nobody wants to really believe that they can have an accident. And, and these things catch everybody by surprise. You know, I placed another accident. I call it my mother goose story. This, this, woman, this woman was getting supper on a rainy night, and she went over to the bread box to get some bread, and she didn't have any. So she walked over to the living room door, and she said to her husband, Honey, i got to go to the store to get some bread. He only half heard her. And she, she said, dinner's almost ready, and she started across the kitchen, and she had an eight-year-old daughter, and that little girl said, Mommy, can I go with you? The little girl was smart. She knew if she got her mother in the store, that meant a candy bar, comic book, bottle pop, something. Can I go? And her mother said, sure, honey, come on. And they went out and got in the car, and they backed out of the driveway, and, and they started down the street. They had three blocks to go right down here to a little corner grocery store. And they made it a block and a half. Some guy drank his dinner on the way home. And, 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 and consequently, he was cutting through the subdivision, trying to get himself home faster. And he was trying to drive his foot through the floorboard. And he come roaring through that intersection. And he hit that car and picked it up and, and carried it right out of the intersection into a big maple tree. Killed both that mother and her daughter. The husband, when his, when his evening no, news program was over with, he, he got up and went out in the kitchen to find out what was holding up his dinner. And when he got out there, he saw the red lights flashing through the kitchen window. And he, and he went out on the front porch and down the street. And all our headlights, the fire engine, the ambulance, the police cars, he, he saw the rear end of his car. And hey, people, he came down there in his stock and feet and he's in a, in a T-shirt in the rain. He found his wife mashed over here up against the left-hand doorpost with her head twisted around up there, jammed in here between the door and the steering wheel. His daughter had her head down in here behind the steering wheel, looking backwards towards her mother with her teeth shoved out of the side of her face with her neck shattered. And then about a half an hour later, I had to take him back down to his house. And when we walked in the house, I said, sir, you better shut that stuff off on the stove. It's burning. And I went over and I moved their dishes around on the table. And, and I, laid, I, I laid my clipboard down there and I started making out the accident report. And that man came and sat down across from me across that table. You know what he did? While I'm sitting there making out that accident report, he's sitting there saying, well, m my wife and daughter have just gone to the store for some, for, for some bread and we're going to have our dinner just as soon, soon as they get home. That's all the family I got, just my wife and, just, just my wife and daughter and my little daughter smart and, and they're going to be home in just a minute and I'm going to have my dinner because, boy, I'm getting hungry. And every time I wanted to ask him a question, I had to reach across and take his hand and shake him and bring him back to reality. And when I did, then he would answer my questions, and then he'd go right back into that monologue again. Hey, people, just, just stop and think about that. That happens 50,000 times a year. How can your whole life just be turned over because somebody wants to go to the store to get a loaf of bread? They, they didn't wear their seatbelts. Just as simple as that. That, that happens 50,000 times a year.